Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mark Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for September 21st, 2022, on 2 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about this afternoon, including powerful Hurricane Fiona approaching Bermuda and a look at a new hurricane threat developing in the Caribbean over the next couple of days. So let's go and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that we have several systems on the board. We have Hurricane Fiona now pulling away from the Turks and Caicos Islands after raking the area with hurricane conditions. And we have Invest Area 98L approaching the Windward Islands, Tropical Storm Gaston approaching the Azor Islands, and two other tropical disturbances we will be monitoring over the next couple of days uh, near Africa. So we take a look here at Hurricane Fiona this afternoon. We noticed that the storm is finally beginning to pull away from the Turks and Caicos Islands at this point and is now beginning its northward track and will eventually turn northeastward closer to Bermuda within the next couple of days. Now, the overall appearance of the storm this afternoon has not really changed much. However, it is a little bit degraded from what we saw last night. Now, a large problem here uh, that the storm has faced over the last several days is that we've had some southwesterly vertical shear over top of the system, and that has allowed for the storm to occasionally ingest a little bit of dry air and just overall be asymmetric. And although we do notice that the core is still really well defined today, and if we look at the recon plane that's in there, we notice, or that has been in there, we notice that the pressures were consistent around uh, the upper and the high 930s into the low 940s with 130 mile per hour wind uh, located here on the northeastern quadrant. Uh, but this is likely now approaching its max or has likely peaked at max intensity and will only begin to weaken over the next couple of days as it encounters higher shear and interacts with a trough. Now the overall track forecast here is, has this system moving off towards the north and east over the next couple of days, remaining a category 4 hurricane through at least Friday afternoon or Friday morning really, and then beginning to weaken from there. Now. Even though Bermuda is no longer in this cone of uncertainty, the cone only dictates where the center will go. And for that reason, uh, the impacts are expected to be outside this cone, obviously. And this is a very large system bringing wind field with it and bringing heavy rainfall. That wind field is expanding. And for that reason, we have a hurricane watch in effect for Bermuda at this point as hurricane conditions are possible on Friday. This will eventually turn off towards the north and west as it interacts with a trough and be located near Halifax at this particular point and Atlantic Canada as a strong hurricane uh, or a strong post-tropical cyclone uh, as this goes from a warm core hurricane into a mid-latitude cyclone. Now, if you look at the H4 forecast here, this is the H4 valve, uh, this is the Jersey run valve for 15 hours from now, so this is 11 a.m. on Wednesday. Again, we notice that, or I'm sorry, this is now, uh, and then we go forward in time. This is 24 hours, so this is this evening because this is last night's run. Uh, and then we go forward in time. We notice how this wind field overly enlarges, and if we look at the island of Bermuda, which is located right here, we notice that, again, this wind field is pretty massive at this point, extending several hundred miles and would be bringing tropical storm conditions to the islands. So tropical storm warnings are issued for that area. And then we notice that uh, there might even be the, the threat for hurricane force winds here, especially on the western part of the island. You notice that there is this uh, purple contour in here indicating 64 knot or 75 mile per hour winds uh, that it will be very close to the island of Bermuda. So hurricane conditions are possible. Either way, if we look at the moisture field, there will be some pretty substantial moisture in this area at this particular time. So a lot of heavy rainfall, especially, and storm surge issues will likely plague the island no matter uh, if it does bring hurricane conditions to the island or not. Now, beyond Bermuda, there is this threat also for this to make a significant impact in Atlantic Canada. If we look at the uh, H wharf, the zoomed out view here, and notice the wind field at this point as it begins to interact with this trough. And we also notice here we've got a cold front moving on the northwestern periphery of the system right now. And as this system, or, or as this nears Bermuda, and as this system moves towards the northwest, it's going, to, it's going to get caught up in this front here and slingshot it back towards the west here. But notice as it does so, that wind field expands very significantly. And we're still dealing with uh, almost about uh, 115 
uh, mile per hour winds here that are raking portions of uh, you know Newfoundland and Atlantic Canada at this point. Now, obviously, the wind field will begin to weaken as this undergoes that extra tropical transition, and it will weaken pretty significantly quite quickly. However, again, because of the large size here, we could see tropical storm force winds all the way towards St. John's at this point. And I've obviously, this is going to have a very significant rainfall threat as well as this begins to move towards the northwest. And of course, because of this motion too, this will also bring a significant amount of storm surge into this region as well. So we're going to be talking about some very substantial impacts uh, sometime Friday evening going into Saturday and continuing. Uh, we could see this continuing all the way into uh, Sunday as well. Now, in the rest of the tropics, we also have Tropical Storm Gaston now with sustained winds closing in on 70 miles per hour at this particular point. Now, this is expected to be moving towards the north and east here eventually slowing down, taking a, south, a southward jog and could get quite close to portions of the Azor Islands, which is now in that cone before jogging back off towards the north and west here as a post-tropical cyclone. So this is something to continue to monitor for the Azor Islands. Again, tropical storm conditions are possible, uh, really beginning sometime on Friday. And then this becomes quickly post-tropical, merging with the mid-latitude cyclone and dissipating sometime on Monday. Now also we have a slew of other systems mainly going to be now focusing on Invest Area 98L located in the Windward Islands at this point. This will be moving off towards the north and west over the next several days and this is what is garnered a lot of uh, uncertainty and model interest uh, because this could be a powerful system. So let's go ahead and look at that. We'll take a here look at the visible satellite imagery for this system. We notice that the storm is not very well organized today, and that's kind of been the theme of it for several days now. Uh, we notice that in the zoomed in sector here, we notice that we don't really have a lot going on. Uh, however, we kind of notice that there's in this overall envelope of energy here kind of curling around like this uh, as this has now entered the Caribbean and near the ABC Islands. And again, this is kind of the trough axis in here. And we notice though that this is displaced from the overall convective activity or the massive convective activity uh, towards the uh, east of this uh, wave axis. And if we take a look here at why that is, it's because we have a lot of shear still coming out of uh, Fiona right now. It's Fiona's outflow that is actually creating this shear over top of 98L currently. And that's not likely to change for several days as the system tries to move towards the northwest and in towards the central Caribbean. If we look at the GFS uh, forecast here. This is the 12Z run. Uh, this is the analysis period, 8, 8 a.m. this morning. So we'll move this forward out in time. We notice what ends up happening here is that we do end up with a weaker solution. And this has kind of been the theme of the GFS that has been more so correcting towards the European model, which has uh, constantly shown very little development in the near term out here in the eastern part of the Caribbean and more development once this gets past the longitude here of Jamaica and in towards the western and northwestern part of the Caribbean. If we look at the upper level wind environment, again this is the 12Z or the yeah the 12Z GFS here, we notice that again really Fiona's outflow right now is the big problem because this is actually creating that massive a flow that's coming out of the north and just shearing the system and that's very unlikely to change for several days and in fact Fiona's outflow is so strong that it actually manages to create this uh, pocket of upper level high here this upper level ridging and so this just continues to be pumping shear in across portions of the western I'm sorry the eastern Caribbean and so this is going to limit uh, intensification and organization for the next while here uh, but eventually that begins to dissipate as again Fiona moves out of the way and then we get this upper level low here that is moving off towards the west. So this is moving in the same direction as 98L which again might create just a little bit of shear over top of the system but we notice that uh, by Sunday we end up with a little bit lighter shear and then eventually on Monday going into Tuesday that's when things really begin to, to take a change. Uh, really for better or for worse here because again we start to see that this upper level anticyclone is developing 
uh, over the Western and Northwestern Caribbean, allowing for our storm to become better organized at this point. And in fact, on the GFS forecast, this develops a pretty major hurricane uh, within just about five days as this moves off towards the north and west. Now, there's a lot of uncertainty in the overall track forecast, and a reason for that is because, again, the shear down here, uh, if this system tries to develop a little bit sooner, because we're still getting a lot of that flow out of the northwest, this is trying to tug any mid-level circulation further south in towards South America. So if this does develop too quickly and theoretically becomes deeper, it will move uh, towards the south before gaining latitude. And whether or not this happens remains to be seen, uh, but this is certainly a very realistic possibility. Now, if you look at the European forecast, the zero Z euro, again, it keeps it weak until about reaches south of Jamaica before intensifying this into a pretty potent hurricane and moving towards the north and west from there. And this is 144 hours from now, so this is beyond that five-day time frame, but this is Monday night going into Tuesday of next week. And we have a system here approaching uh, the Cuba area within, again, just a few days here. And if we look here at the upper ocean heat content values, again, there is a vast amount of energy for this system to work with. And certainly uh, this will have the opportunity to get quite strong quite quickly if it plays its cards right. And again, a large uh, thing that we're going to be monitoring is how fast does this develop and exactly where does it develop? Now, beyond that, again, we're still watching for potential impacts to the United States and elsewhere. If you look at the super ensemble blend from the Zero Z runs here, this is, again, 139 different ensemble members, including the deterministic Euro, GFS, and UK Met here. So we noticed that over the next several days, again, it's pretty consistent on where this is going to go. Very, I mean, there's marginal spread, but again, uh, this is pretty tightly clustered for the next about 60 hours or so. Beyond that, though, we start to see a change in the overall forecast. This is hour 96 off of the Super Ensemble blend, and we notice that we have a large amount of uncertainty already within 96 hours from now. We have a few outlier members that are moving more towards the northwest, even one that gets it near, um, you know, Hispaniola again. And most of the members are still tightly clustered, kind of with that bend back off towards the west here. It seems inevitable that this is going to bend westward for some time as this tries to become vertically stacked. However, again, eventually, because of an upper level trough that will be over the northern United States that has been constantly forecast for several days now, it seems inevitable that this will make that northwest turn at some point. But exactly where that northwest turn happens remains to be seen. And in fact, here within just about uh, four days, or I'm sorry, about six days from now, there's a lot of uncertainty here, including several members that try to pick this up and actually carry it uh, through Cuba and into the Bahamas and out uh, kind of around the ridge here, the subtropical ridge, and tries to pick this up and carry it theoretically out to sea here at this particular point. So there is still that outside possibility, but either way, it looks like land impacts somewhere will occur. But again, how strong this gets is going to kind of determine the overall track. And then there's also kind of that other extreme where this is, you know, kind of weak enough that it just follows the low level flow into portions of Central America at this point. Uh, but beyond that, there's several members that, again, try to diverge this from a quick solution that maybe skirts the southeastern tip of Florida. Um, there's definitely the ensemble mean here that tries to go split down the middle and then a deterministic GFS, which kind of carries it that way. So a lot of uncertainty here within the next few days, and you can see that ensemble ellipse grows to be several hundred miles uh, long here. So a possible solution from about southeast Florida to portions of Cancun and uh, the Yucatan Peninsula seems possible here at this particular point. But we have a lot to watch here and a long way to go. All right. So that being said, I hope you have a good rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll luckily talk to you guys again some more later tonight.